Manchester is one of the UK's most influential cities. It's full of things to see and do, and it's rich in history and steeped in fame, bursting with character at every corner. The city is famous for many things, including its contributions to music, sport, and the most stunning architecture. Located in the west of Garton stands an amazing piece of Gothic architecture, which is a great example of this fascinating history. Garton Monastery. The Grade 2 listed building offers the perfect setting for all kinds of occasions, from weddings to concerts and everything in between. But that's far from the full story. The building was used as a place for Christian worship for many years, until it closed down in 1989. It was left abandoned and vandalised for so many years, until two people named Elaine and Paul Griffiths decided to take on the building. The really interesting thing about this building is it was an endangered World Monuments site when it closed and it was famous for his architecture. It was designed by Edward Welby Pugin, whose father, Augustus, did the Houses of Parliament. So it is very, very famous for its architecture. Really unusual to find a building like this in a place like Gorton. Describing the monastery in my own words would be spectacular, gothic. Um, a wonderful building. It has a iconic green steeple that can be seen for miles. It was just the centre of the community. Um, my family used to go to church every Sunday. We'd dress up to go to church. All the families would dress up to go to church. You'd see friends from school there and it was just a great community. Also there were three schools here, there was a parish hall, there were football teams, there were choirs, there was you know everything that sort of like kept the community together went on around this church. For over a century the church played a central role in the life of Garton but the post-war years brought change, much of it for the worse. It closed in 1989 and I would have been 21 so it was quite sad really because it's, it's all I've known I still lived in the area at the time, um, I was baptised there, I made my first confession, first Holy Communion and I always thought I would get married there but it was quite upsetting really to think that that was not going to be and um, I think it was the same for a lot of people in the area and the nearest church was a good walk really for some of the older people who didn't have any transport so it's quite a worry for how they were going to get to church as well so um and but as for the building itself we was wondering what what would happen to it I first visited in September 1996 because there'd been articles in the Manchester Evening News and pieces on Granada Television and BBC Northwest Tonight saying that the building was really being badly vandalised and why wasn't somebody doing something about Gorton Monastery and Paul and I had talked for many many years about how important it was to the family so it just seemed sensible for me to say you know can you show me you know I'd like to see it it really needed to be one of those projects that you either do properly or don't don't do at all and that was the thing that really you know started it for us I remember walking into the back of the nave here and the hairs on the back of my neck went and it was like oh my goodness what a powerful incredible place even though it was completely derelict and damaged and I just felt from that moment I've really got to do try and do something to help and that's really when it all began um, we did realize that we couldn't just do it as a small project. We had to form a proper charity, get registered charitable status and start a campaign to try and save the monastery. The actual fundraising and restoration was a very, very long process. So we formed the charity in 1996, but we actually didn't succeed until 2005 before we ever, you know, were able to actually start the restoration. So it was almost 10 years of fundraising, trying to get support, trying to get all the heritage people, like English Heritage, Architectural Heritage Fund, the Heritage Lottery Fund, all the people locally to support what we were trying to do. And of course at that time we didn't own the building. Um, a lot of people think 
that we bought it, we actually couldn't afford to buy it because it was priceless. But actually, because it was going to take millions to restore it, it was also worthless because you'd have to be a millionaire if you were actually going to buy it. But because we were a charity and because we wanted to put it back at the heart of the community, we were able to buy it for a pound and then we were able to get the grant support to put it back as a community resource. After decades of dedication and funding, the monastery finally reopened to the public in June 2007. When the monastery reopened, it was I was really pleased and I think the, the community were pleased because it's brought life back into the area. And, um, there's, it's attracted a lot of jobs. There's a lovely little cafe there that you can go and um, have a break, have a coffee, have a cake. Um, and you can just look at the magnificent building. We know that when the monastery was finally saved and it was reopening, we got so, so much support from people. And I think the whole community are so proud of it once again. Um, for many, many years, it was kind of heartbreaking for them because they thought it was just going to be falling down and would be lost forever. And we've had older people coming in here in tears, saying, why have they allowed it to you know, be vandalised? Why have they allowed everything to be stolen? And, and you know, the altars were smashed up. The saints ended up going to a Sotheby's auction to be sold as garden ornaments. Um, and we've managed to get those back. We've managed to get the crucifix back as a work of art. I mean, we're not a church anymore, but obviously it's important that we get the precious works of art back so people can still see them because they belong to Gorton and they should be here. But the monastery is open now for anyone to go so you can go and see those statues. Anyone can go visit. People visit from all over the world now to go to the monastery because they've renovated it in such a great way. Today, the monastery shines bright again, saved for future generations. It carries history and represents the lives and experiences of local people. Nowadays, it's used as a beautiful venue for events. It's a place for the local community to come together, unwind and enjoy eccentric experiences. Um, we now open from Sunday to Thursday, from 10 till 4 every day, free of charge, with free parking, so that the public can enjoy this beautiful space. We run um, a sanctuary, which is a mental health support um, and wellbeing centre, so people can come and see listeners and counsellors and get the support that they need, even if they can't get in to see their GP or get any um, support, because we felt that's really important that the monastery is helping support the community. Um, we do different things every day that support the local community and their health and wellbeing. But the way we earn our money is that we close on a Friday and Saturday and we usually offer it then for hire for exclusive weddings, exclusive dinners, um, exclusive concerts. So Fridays and Saturdays we close to the public but the rest of the time we're open. There's lots of events that take place there. I've been to a few of the Christmas fairs, the vintage fairs, the, um, they have um, yoga, they have mindfulness events. Um, they have uh, music therapy for people uh, with Alzheimer's. They have deck chair cinema. I went to a deck chair cinema event. It was really nice. Not only is the monastery a great attraction for people in Manchester, but there have also been many famous visitors to the site over the years. It's always amazing when you get famous people come in because they almost react in the way that I did that very first visit and they go, oh, wow, what an amazing place. Um, and I suppose the most famous ones have been the royal visitors that we've had. Um, the Prince of Wales first came here in 2007 when it was still derelict and uh, we had students working with us doing stone carving and stained glass and doing training here so he was really supportive and then he came back in 2010 um, because he was doing a sustainability initiative and going around the country looking at charities that were helping um, recycle things. So he was thrilled to come here and did a big sustainability dinner in 2010. And then he must have gone back and told his mum and dad because then the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh came to visit us in November 2013 and have lunch here. So that was probably the proudest moment in terms of our celebrity visitors. You just wonder what the Queen must have thought driving through West Garden but ended up at the monastery, it was an amazing thing. If you want to know more about the monastery, feel free to visit the website at themonastery.co.uk or even visit in person. Visitors are free to have a look around and find out more about its history and the journey to where it is today.
It's a place that I hope would make people feel welcome. It's a place of peace, a place where we try and nurture people, look after them. We always used to say at the beginning, the purpose for doing it, the reason we were doing it, was to inspire the future and respect the past. And then we added the third one, which was realising potential. And that's what we like to do with everyone who comes through our doors, whether it's a small child from primary school right through to you know, one of the elderly people or students in between. We like everybody to be able to come and benefit from just being in this place. Mm -hmm.